Hi, this is Lokai from Beta Folders, and this is the third in a series of videos on how to play the coronavirus puzzles in Fold It. This one takes up right where the second one left off. Uh, we've made uh, three helical bundles and uh, did some mutating and shaking and wiggling and got them scoring pretty good. So I'm just finishing up a second cycle of mutation here, and once again I've let it run a little bit longer than maybe necessary, but we're up to six minutes and four cycles of mutation. So let's stop it again. And now in the uh, previous video, the second video in the series, uh, we demonstrated uh, turning off the uh, filters, which slow things down. And that's important when we're doing things like shake and wiggle. And uh, once again, you need to uh, Engage the advanced GUI option under general options. Control T will get you general options and that will uh, give you the ability to disable filters. So I'm going to shake and wiggle our mutated thing and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, that's enough of that. So uh, we lost some points uh, due to turning off the filters. So we'll toggle all, run all and turn our filters back on again, see where we're... Okay, so we're up to 14,496 points, not too bad. And I'm gonna to go to the uh, menu menu and do a, another save here, save solution. And I'll just say, Helix bundle with second round mutate. Shake, wiggle. Okay, so that's saved. We can always come back to it if we want to. So, not a bad position. The, the next thing I'd like to do and is uh, actually get this over closer to uh, the coronavirus part, which is the whole point of this thing. So I'm just going to click on the Move tool. That gives me the uh, familiar options there. I'm going to put down that menu. And then I'll hold down the Control key and just drag on that purple cross. Okay, so that gets those closer together. And I'm going to, just going to right-click and drag on the background. And I will keep rotating. Always important to uh, assess the three-dimensional aspects of things. And I'm going to uh, just left-click and uh, use the cross tool to rotate a little bit. And you can see that made uh, quite a bit of my protein turn red. So that means the... Uh, score is hurting there and if I turn on clashes probably see why yep there are a lot of those clashes there so I might want to uh, whoops might want to move this over a little bit yes excellent clash clearing very good but I still got some red parts on the protein so let's just uh, shake and wiggle again So I did a little bit of shaking, now I'm wiggling, and you'll notice that my uh, protein, my binder, is moving away from the uh, coronavirus part. So that's going to be common because the that's, that's one way of getting rid of those clashes. Okay, we're starting to spin here. So now what we'd probably like to do at this point is go back to view options. And we have been in stubs mode here, where we show just a little nub for each of the side chains. So I'll instead turn on all side chains. And that gives you a better idea of how far you are from the coronavirus. And uh, also we want to get the uh, side chains on our designed part closer to the more colorful side chains, as, as we discussed in the first video. Uh, th those are the, the movable side chains in the coronavirus part. And uh, I picked kind of the underside of the groove here. So I'm not feeling too good about that right now, actually. So let's just try a different position. And again, we're, we're not doing too badly in terms of the score. We're off a little bit from where we were. But uh, let's try an entirely new position. So I'm just going to use the Move tool. And I'm just going to Control, click and drag on that. And I'm going to move right around to the other side of the coronavirus. And, oops, started something there by accident. Stop that, whatever it was. Let's grab this again. 
move it up a little closer. So right now the score is going to be horrible. A lot of clashing because I have two things in the same place at once, and that's bad. Let's drag through here. That'll clear a lot of the clashes. Create some new clashes. And I'm feeling a little bit better about this. So I think this may be a better side of the coronavirus spike protein to try to bind to. I'm just going to move it in here. And still some clashing. So I'm going to take a different approach. I'm just going to wiggle for a, a very short little bit. So I'll open the actions menu, click on wiggle and get ready to stop it. This will cause my protein to move. Okay, moved a little bit farther than I hoped. Wasn't able to stop it quick enough. Okay, so let's use the move tool again. I'm just going to put down this menu for the sake of uh, visibility. Let's move it a little bit closer. Yeah, still not too bad. Still not too bad. Getting one little clash there. Uh, let's let's rotate over in this direction a little bit. Gives us some more opportunity for clashes. But those clashes can turn into binding. So let's see where we get from there. We've knocked nearly 5,000 points off the score. Okay, so that's good as far as I'm concerned. The, the next thing I want to do is try another round of mutation. And so we'll open up the actions menu. We'll just click mutate. And I could have done a save here, but uh, that's okay. I have a pretty good save. We can always go back to that if we want to. So let's just do mutate and we'll time lapse it here. Okay, so we've gone through three complete cycles. Uh, well, two, two plus cycles anyway of mutate. Nearly five minutes. So let's stop that again. You notice that all the uh, clashes that we were seeing a minute ago have disappeared here. So uh, let's try another shake and wiggle. Uh, once again, we'll go uh, time lapse on this. Okay, so we're back after another round of shake and wiggle. Uh, the protein has uh, pretty much held its shape. It hasn't moved away from the uh, coronavirus part, so that's all good. Now, a little hard to tell in this view uh, how well we're doing exactly. Our, our score is up pretty close to where we had it before, so nearly 14,500 at this point. So let's look at some view options that might help, and I'm thinking of show bond side chain. So that'll show the hydrogen bonds between the, the side chains. And I also want to show bondable atoms, and that, that's going to highlight the atoms that can form hydrogen bonds. So right away you'll see that there are some hydrogen bonds involving side chains, but uh, okay, there's, there's uh, actually one already. Whoops. Careful what you drag on. So right here we've got a side chain on our, the part that we're designing. And that's forming a bond with these two side chains that are over here on the coronavirus part. So that's what I call a promising start. And ideally you want to see more of that. So let's see what we got over here. Oh, by, by George, we've got another one. So here we have a side chain on the binder part, the part we're designing. It, it bonds to a, another side chain on the, the binder part. And uh, then it goes over here to the uh, coronavirus part. So that's pretty good. So already uh, two of the helixes uh, have bonds to the coronavirus part. So that, that's a really pretty good start. Again, with this show bondable atoms turned on, uh, you'll see these little uh, blue or red or purple caps on some of the atoms. And if you hover over that on the blue one, it'll show you that it's a hydrogen bond donor. And uh, if you hover on a red one, that's a hydrogen bond acceptor. So uh, right here, these two could theoretically form a hydrogen bond uh, with each other if we got them uh, just close enough. Uh, so there's a third type. 
if you see a purple cap, that's both a donor and an acceptor. So it can e either uh, create a hydrogen bond with a hydrogen bond acceptor or with a hydrogen bond donor. So twi twice the possibilities. And that has to do with the uh, actual hydrogen atoms that are near that atom. Uh, so if we show, do, click uh, Show All Bondable H, that'll show us some more atoms. Uh, normally we kind of neglect the uh, hydrogen atoms. But if you turn that on, you can see that there's a, technically this is an oxygen atom. Uh, and uh, it's got a hydrogen atom right next to it. So that lets the oxygen uh, function as either a donor or acceptor. And over here we have a blue atom. That's a nitrogen, I happen to know, and that has three hydrogen atoms. So potentially that guy could uh, participate in three hydrogen bonds, but uh, it can only be an, a uh, donor, not an acceptor. So anyway, that's uh, a pretty promising start. And just a little look ahead. The previous uh, series of steps was done on puzzle 1808, which has expired since then, and we're currently on uh, puzzle 1811 as far as the coronavirus goes. And that's kind of a different looking thing, but many of the principles that we covered in the videos uh, will still apply. In this one, uh, it's a little bit different because we have a locked part here that's actually part of the area that you're designing, and there are these two long, straight blue things. Uh, these are like the cut points that we looked at, but you can't get rid of them no matter how close they get. So they're kind of permanent cut points. And I'll zoom out some more. Then on either side of the locked part, there's it's a little hard to see, but there's a long straight chain again. So that's the extended chain. And we'll move them apart a little bit so you can see it better. So again, you can design that uh, unlocked part into whatever you, you uh, feel like. And uh, the locked part, well, that's going to stay where it is. But uh, if we zoom in on that again, you'll notice it has colorful side chains. So that's, that's a hint that those side chains can at least move. And we can look at these. That's valine. That's also valine. So it's got... Unlock side chains on the one side anyway, and they're all valine. So that's that's probably a hint. So we could try hotkey four, design mode, and then we can left click on one of these orange side chains here in this locked part of the design section. Oh, it can mutate. Okay, so I changed the valine in that one to histidine. So our friendly five-sided ring there. So that's just a clue what's going on. So uh, once again, uh, as in the previous puzzles, uh, you've got some straight sections, two of them this time, and uh, making those into helixes and moving them closer to this locked section and doing some mutating and shaking and wiggling will uh, get you a certain distance on this puzzle at least, even if it won't be the best score. We've been working on this one for a little while now. It's still in its first day, but uh, one thing we've noticed, and we, we've seen this in, in previous puzzles that have had this permanent cut point feature, is that it's very difficult to get an ideal loop uh, across that permanent cut point. Uh, the remix tool, which would be the primary way you do that, uh, doesn't work on anything that has a cut point in it, and it, it doesn't work in this case either. Uh, it also doesn't work on anything that, that you've, uh, as a user, have frozen. Um, so it, it really doesn't work on this locked section with the uh, permanent cut points at each end of it. So that that's a challenge. Uh, but uh, everybody else is facing the same challenge, and so good luck on that. I think that's uh, going to wrap up uh, this series. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and keep on folding.